Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Phew, I've been out gardening and I can't bend now. You know what it's like when you arrive at spring and the garden is just a tip because everything, you've got leaves, you've got twigs, you've got, oh, and my garden's quite a messy garden because we've got trees. So I've been out there for ages. Oh, and I can't bend now. But I thought rather than nodding off, which I'm doing, I've got nodding head syndrome because I keep falling asleep while Ian's got the sport on. I thought, no, I'll come up and create a project. So what I've got is my usual Pink Frog Smooth card and it is three and a half inches by seven and then a black mat three and a quarter, three and three quarter inches by seven and a quarter and a card blank four and a half by eight just so you can see. So that is what I'm going to be working on. So my first piece, that's three and a half by seven. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do something really simple. Blending inks, just enjoying myself and nothing too complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with mustard seed. I'm going to take my mustard seed. And what I think I'll do is, because I'm a bit warm, well, I'll, let's not bit around the bush I'm more than a bit warm I'm a woman of a certain age so I get hot anyway I never used to be hot I used to be nesh but I get hot very quickly hot flushes so I'm just going to use a piece of kitchen roll so I don't put any sort of paw prints on there so I'm going to start by bending the card no I'm going to start with mustard seed so we'll start with our mustard seed and what I like to do is try and not think about it too much, about where I'm placing it. The only thing that makes me consider where I'm placing things is if I've got like a purple and an orange, which makes brown, you need to be aware of that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going, I've just picked colours out of my drawer without thinking about it too much. I've then got cracked pistachio. So we've got some green there. And we'll add a little bit of the cracked pistachio. And just take a really good layer of ink. And to blend, I tend to go over the area several times just to get my blend. I'm then going to use picked raspberry. And the only other thing I try to make make sure that I'm aware of is that some colours obviously some are more well used than others so some will go on there very richly because you know maybe I've not used them as much as another colour so I just need to be aware of that and some colours may need a few more layers than others so we've got the pink and you can see I'm wiping that up. If you want to, you can spritz that area and just mop that up with another piece of card, should you wish. I'm then going to pick up my shaded lilac. So just pick up that shaded lilac. Now, I, I seem to use shaded lilac quite a bit because this ink pad is not as juicy as the other ink pads. Proves I use them. So let's just build up that colour a little bit more so I'm just going for a nice colourful card so then I'm going to go to my wilted violet now I know wilted violet is a very rich colour for me it's it's one that's a bit more inky maybe I've not used it quite as much as I've used others. So then I'm going to use the pink here next to the yellow, which will make some orange as they touch each other. They will go into an orangey colour. Again, just blending my colours. Don't press on too hard because it just makes your arm ache. Ask me how I know. 
So I'm now taking the cracked pistachio. I'm going to take some of that cracked pistachio. And I can see that I use the cracked pistachio quite a lot as well. So I'm just going to layer a little bit more of that colour. Then we'll go back to the mustard seed. Just take some of that mustard seed. And just blend that colour as well. And then shall we have a little bit of pink down in this bottom corner here. So just blend that. Now, you don't have to wipe up the collar. You can just mop that up with your another piece of card if you wish. So I've got a nice, colourful, simple background. I'm then going to use my deciduous stencil 181, I think it is. And I'm going to, so here I've got sort of the yellows and greens here. So what I'm going to do is apply some pink onto the yellows and greens. And then on the pink, we shall, shall we apply some of the purple? So some of the wilted violet. Let's turn it that way. It doesn't all have to be the same way. So we'll use the wilted violet. It's just coming into here. And then we'll use the wilted violet down this area here. And sometimes you don't even have to add much ink you can have it subtle if you wish. It's entirely up to you. So now we will, we've got colours on here which we can add to a different card as well. Let's add some yellow mustard seed here. So just alternating the colours just on my stenciled areas. So just sort of alternating the colours a little bit. And obviously, therefore, I'm adding ink to this as well. So let's add a little bit of cracked pistachio now. So just mixing the colours up a little bit and leaving the ink just on the stencil. So this is cracked pistachio. I'm just holding my stencil in place with my fingers. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can therefore use um, your masking tape, your low tack tape. So what I've got now is let's just put these all out of the way so that we don't get in too much of a mess with everything lying around everywhere. So I've got my background there. Let me just move this out of the way. So I've got my background so far. And then if I can just find, she says, um, I often look through my little collections of cards just to see what I've got. What have we got? Come on, find a card. There we go. I knew I'd find one in the end. So now I've got the inks on here on this stencil, which I'm not going to waste. We may as well spritz our stencil and make sure that we use the ink that's on there. So I'm just going to spritz the stencil with water. Yes, the numbers will be the other way round, but it doesn't matter. It's a background. It really isn't a problem. So let's just blot that up. 
so the kitchen roll just blots up the excess moisture so that that doesn't sort of bleed underneath your stencil. There we go. So we can lift our stencil and then we've got a lovely background. Let's see if there's anything on here. You can even sort of dab things further down. Let me, where did we put a bit of yellow there? So you can then just dry your stencil and then you've got another background that you can use on another project. That's true. I have that many backgrounds. I can't even speak either backgrounds even. So we'll go back to our original one and we're just going to spritz the ink with a little bit of water which of course when you're holding it further up it spritzes everywhere but there you go i'm going to let the lovely oxides do what they do best so just give them time just to do what they do best this bit of kitchen roll now is soaking wet but i'm just allowing it to do its thing just give it a few moments don't be in too much of a rush it's still reacting and then if you're happy with the reaction that you've got you can then dab your card and it will continue reacting whilst the card is still moist but you can just see you've got some of those bleached out areas on there i'm just going to give that a little waft with the heat tool mainly giving it a little waft because I would like to stamp as well. I don't have to heat it so much that it curls, it's just giving it a little waft with the heat tool. It's still got moisture in there, you can feel it, but it's a little bit better for stamping onto. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use my Malva stamp TE8 and I'm going to pick up this one so we'll take our little stamp try and keep the acetate because I've already lost one piece of acetate I'm terrible so just leave the acetate in there and then it doesn't just get in a total mess so let's take this background stamp and I just think it's a beautiful background stamp so I'm going to use that. And what you can do is you can take your acetate and decide where you want to stamp things. It's entirely up to you how you want to stamp them. So shall I go there? Yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to start at this end first. So I'm going to take my blocking, which I've left the other side of the room, So I'm going to take my Nocturne ink and I'm going to ink the stamp with the black ink. I can tell I'm warm because I'm now rolling sleeves up. So just giving that a really good inking. And you can see, you can see I don't rush. You can see that I do several pattings just to make sure it is nicely covered with ink. So what I'm going to do then is just take my stamp and then allow that just to sit there for a few moments. Now you have that distress oxide layer on there. So that means that this card is not absorbent. It's no longer absorbent because you've added a layer of that oxide ink. So what you want to do is you want the ink to grab hold of that surface. Now you can't just plonk it on there and then lift it up and expect the image to be perfect. So just be a little bit patient. I know I'm not very good at patience, but just allow it just to just rest on there a short while. You can even just leave it sitting there for a little bit 
and just then just use your finger just always leaving a finger in place just to add your image and you can see it's a beautiful image and I love that it's got the word garden in there as well but we're going to use it as sort of oh, upside down as a background so I'm going to create a background with mine so I'm going to stamp it in different areas around the card just using it as a background Now, if you don't want to hold your stamp over there, again, take your acetate and see what you want to do. So, do I want it? Yes, I think. I... There. So, rather than hold your stamp over, just use your acetate and have a think about your placement. Now, I may get some on my non-stick craft sheet because of where I'm going for the placement. So I think I'll go around about there. So I'm just moving the stamp around just to give me sort of a background. It's as if it's a bigger stamp. I'm extending the image just to give it a little bit more interest. And you can see again, just allowing that just to do its thing and because we've got those beautiful versafine clear inks that have got a good open time they work beautifully there we go so you can see you're now extending that stamp just so that it looks a little bit different And that's why I love stamps. They're so, so versatile and can be used over and over again. There we go. And then I don't want this one sort of here. I think so. So we'll have that one there. And if you wanted to, you could keep it just like that and just add a sentiment. It just works so beautifully in its own right. So just give that a little bit of time. Don't make your arms ache. You can just use a finger. As long as you never lift all your fingers off the stamp because then you'll get rocking just beautiful just a beautiful stamp and you can carry on you just do you want to add little parts of it see i like that so let's add a little bit of the image so again always ink more than you actually need so that you don't miss any area. There we go. So now I'm just adding part of that image. And therefore, if you just want to keep it like this and you don't want to have any cutting out, that in its own right looks beautiful. So we want the bottom half now. Just on its in its own right, it's beautiful. So we'll add this here. Like so. It 
and you can see I took my time each time doing the stamping and I just think that just like that you could have a sentiment here or there and it works beautifully and you wouldn't need anything more of course I want something more I'm just going to get some copier paper oh I can tell I've been squatting in the garden you wouldn't think I went to the gym and did squats I can't move right so let's just give that so what I'm doing now is I'm sort of, if that ink is just resting on the top, any of that ink, I'm just removing some of that ink so that we don't smudge it because of that oxide layer. But there's not much at all. So what I'll do is I'll just give that a little waft with my heat tool. Just to make doubly sure. So you could quite easily just leave that like that. So let's just take this. And that's why you should never underestimate stamps. If you've got a good design and they're a strong design, you can use them over and over. Then you're not limited. So what I'm thinking now, I'll just twist the card all over the place. I'm going to add one of my Malvas. So I'm going to... I need to... Let's have one of it. I've got some masks. And I sometimes think, if you've got the mask... Look how many masks I've got here. Uh, have I got a Malva? Clematis... Mouse. You can bet that the one I find last will be the Malva. The hair. There you go. Told you, didn't I? So I've got my masks now. So what I can do is I can see by playing around with the design, you know, whether you want one, you could have. So let's have my Malva sort of there and it works quite nicely. Obviously, I'm going to colour that in. So I'm going to add a Malva. So I'm just going to stamp one just onto a piece of white card. And then we can colour our project in. But doesn't that look lovely? I think that's really nice. So let's take our Malva. Which way do I fancy having it? Doesn't matter because I'll just turn it round anyway by the time I've cut it out because that's me all over. So we'll just... that a really good inking there we go we'll just add our Malva Now, if you wanted to have some of the colours that are on here, underneath on your Malva, then you can just take, say I want the shaded lilac. I can take the shaded lilac and you can just add. So this will sort of give you a base colour for your floral, if you wish. So if we just add... So it's entirely up to you whether you want to stamp onto the white card and then colour or add some base colour. That won't give it any depth, but a base colour and then stamp on the top. 
So just give that a good inking. Because you're stamping on top of that oxide. So let's stamp our image. And this will give me a base colour to work from to add some more depth and definition to the design. Again, I've added that oxide, so it just needs a little bit longer. So just give that a little bit longer. Don't be too impatient. Now, I often hear, and I've seen it in some groups as well, where people say you can't stamp onto oxides. Well, yes, you can. You can stamp onto your oxide, no problem at all. Just remember some good guidelines. One, blot your ink, because that ink is designed for a porous surface. Just blot your ink so that you get the first layer of ink removed from there. And then, if you're going to colour, like me, especially if you're going to use Prismacolor, then just give it a little dry so that you don't pick that black ink up on your waxy pencils. So just give that a little dry. But look at this background that we created from the mop-up that was on the stencil. Isn't it good? Just a lovely background. Right, so I'm going to add more colour to this. So that's sort of giving me a base to go from. So I'm then going to, so we'll take a light colour. We want something a little bit darker and something even darker. What colour are you? No, I don't want anything in red. It's only a purple. We'll take that. Let me just see if I want a bit of that as well. I often talk to myself. So what I'm going to do is oh, shuffle on my chair. I'm just going to sharpen, as usual, my Prisma. And I'm just going to start with a touch of violet first, PC932. And I'm just using that just to give me a little bit of darkness. Just to the oxide. So I'm just colouring over that base of oxide. And you can see that oxide layer there is very flat. You can also get depth if you add layers of your oxide ink to colour with. So you don't have to have Prismacolor pencils or coloured pencils. You can still get depth with your Distress oxide inks to colour. Just remember to dry and layer your colours. Let me see. I think I'm then going to go... Not that one. I'm then going to go with Dahlia or Dahlia Purple PC1009. Just sharpen it a little bit more. And then I'm just going to go in to that first colour. Just to blend out. And I'm not breaking down the tooth of the card too quickly. I am just layering the card nice and gent the card, the colour, nice and gently. And obviously I didn't want to colour this one. So let's just add a little bit more. And we'll just add and then I'll go to my very pale colour which is lavender PC nine three four that's isn't it lovely having these lighter evenings because you've still got time to do things and you're not losing the light of day it's just wonderful so i'm then going to go in with the lavender 
can just blend a little bit more. So for the first initial layer, I just sort of add a very light layer of the colour. I don't really do much else. It's sort of a very light layer of that colour. Not really blended either. So then I'm going to go to my darkest colour, which is the violet. And I'm just going to layer that colour a little bit stronger. So just lay that a little bit stronger. But again, I'm not pressing too hard. So I'm just layering the colour. A little bit firmy, but not too firm. I'll then go to my next colour, which is the Dahlia Purple. And then come in to that darker colour. Just to blend it somewhat. And you just sort of go into that dark colour and blend out those harsh lines. There we go. And then we'll go to the lavender, which is the lightest colour. And we'll just blend... those lines and you can see the lines sort of blend before your eyes be difficult for you to see that lines blend but they actually blend before my eyes so I'm just going to grab my white um, I keep trying not to sharpen it so it doesn't go down much more but I can't <laughs> I need to sharpen it now so just sharpen my Prismacolor White. So I've got my Prismacolor White and then I'm just going to just come towards the edge and just blend the edge of the light colour with a little bit of the white. And again, that just softens the edges of that Prismacolor. Just softens them edges a little bit. beautiful I'll lift that up so you can see me personally I think it's a good idea to let the card rest before you try to add any white markings etc now on this one I'm cu cutting right to the edge of that black line. I'm not leaving a white edge. Well, I wouldn't have a white edge anyway, would I? Because I've got that lilac ink just on there. So I'm just cutting round right to the edge. Okay. 
and it's a lovely floral once it's cut out. And if you wet any florals that you cut out, if you spritz them with water, you can then scrunch them as well and give them a totally different look. And if I layered one malva on top of another, again, it would look different. So you could either easily have one on top of the other, turn it slightly, and then you end up with a double floral. So what I'm going to do then is just sort of bend the florals. Do I want it that way and that way? Just bend them a little bit, just to give a little bit, just a bit of life to your floral. Oh, yes. Now I'm just reaching for white cotton. That white cotton will just lift it a little bit. Just going to take the cotton, pull out long le lengths. So pull it out really long lengths like this. And then you'll it'll all be nice and loose rather than all scrunched up tightly and unnatural. You can tell how weak I was. I couldn't even um, pull the cotton then. And I've got my floral all knotted inside there as well. So just creating a lovely little feathery look with the cotton. There we go. Let's just take our time. And then you don't have to add dimension if you don't want to, especially if you're thinking about postage. I don't mind. But it's entirely up to you. But the longer you can give that floral just to dry, the better. I find that things work better if you let it dry. It definitely, for me, my gel pen, it just doesn't work at all. My gel pen, oh, come on. Where's a piece of black card? There you go, I can see it working on the black card. This is why sometimes you think you're going do lally. So there we go. So I'm just going to sort of add a couple of dots here and there just to break. I mean, my floral's going here anyway, but just to sort of break up the area a little bit. And we're going to add some splatters as well. So just to break up that area a little bit. And then I'm going to go to this floral here and I'm just going to add some sort of like bits of pollen just to the floral. And just, you'll find this so much easier when the card has just rested a little bit. So just adding a little bit of that white just to lift that a little bit. And then I'm going to stick down with my pin flare. You don't have to use your pin flare if you, you prefer not to give it any dimension. I like to give it a little dimension. It makes me happy. Leave that there at the moment. 
and then I want another piece of white card. And then I'm just going to take my fin Where's the fin? And there. Last stamp that you look at. If in my quadrilaterals workshop, I use the fin um, to create this little scene here. And I love how the fin is so versatile. It really is versatile. So I just love how that turned out. All right, let's move this out of the way. I'm going to take the fern stamp, which is the little fern here, which is TE3. Let's take that fern. Now, I just want this sort of big one here. just take that big one let's move that out of the way at the moment so I'm just going to it doesn't matter if I ink them both but it's just that one that I actually want so we'll just take that fin and that's the cotton falling over a bit of over inking there so we'll just take that fin I always make sure I'm not stamping onto packaging. I've done that so many times, stamped onto packaging. Oh, I think you could have done a bit better than that, Tracy. I don't think I inked half the fern. So let's just rid of that over inking should we try again so let's just give that ink a little time I actually don't think I inked that side very much no I didn't I can tell right so what I can do now is normally I would block that especially because I'm going to go in there and cut that out so I'm going to, let's just cut some of this card away because I don't want to work with such a big piece of card. There we go. And then I'm going to use my scissors and cut out. Now I know some of you don't like cutting out then don't do it. Don't do something that you don't enjoy. I actually love cutting out because I love the results of having my own little embellishment and that everything's been done by my fair hands rather than having everything ready-made. That's just me. We're all different. We all like different things in craft. So if you don't want to cut the fern out, then by all means, leave the fern. I find it quite easy to cut because it's just in and out. Just in and out, leave a little bit of white space done. And when you get near the top, you don't even have to go that far when you get to the really fine bits. So when you get to the fine bits, you just literally go in and out, in, out, in, out. And then when it's at the top and it's really fine, just sort of give it that feeling of the fern with a bit of a spiky leaf. Again, at the top, just give it the feeling. For me, craft is about enjoying my time creating. It's not about saying all the time, oh, this only took five minutes to make and look. For me, crafting's also about having the pleasure of crafting, not just sticking things on card, actually having the pleasure of making something. 
for me that's the whole point of creating it's not about rushing yes when i do the snippets the idea of that is you still get a quality result um that you create in 15 minutes but it's still not rushing and saying everything has to be done in five minutes it's it's just taking the pleasure from the craft there we go i'm just taking i'll just be a little bit more careful as i come to the bottom mainly because then it's got no stability because now i'm down to this fine little branch area here just cut that a bit longer there we go nice and easy to cut out oh i'll try not to knock the phone like i've just done so i'm going to add a tiny little bit of adhesive just a little bit because i'll capture the actual fern inside the glue that's already there there we go it's just so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my bleed proof white which is the dr ph bleed proof white and i often say you can activate it it's solid in there so we're going to see now if we can reactivate it because i'm always saying oh you can reactivate it so let's see if you can reactivate it yeah you can there you go you can reactivate so you don't waste any of your product just moving this out of the way just so that i don't i don't mind splattering card but let me just take off the excess and then you only have to tap very lightly and it'll just add those white splatters for us and they should stay white. So then we'll just point this over there. And we'll just the few little splatters that we've got there so don't go too mad with the splattering because you've added water to it so if you don't want it to go everywhere just be a little bit gentle with the way that you add that so whilst that dries i'm just going to add this to a black mat because i want to add a bird here maybe i should have done that before the splatters but hey ho so i'm just going to add this to a black mat we'll just you can see i've got splatters underneath the card so just add a little bit of adhesive and then just add that i sort of get one side almost right and then i'll pick that up again you wouldn't do what i'm doing and try to sort of add the mat and layer with those splatters still wet you just wouldn't so just go around your card and just make sure there we go let's give that my hand a little bit of a a clean just have to wait a couple of seconds because I like the card to be flat so I'm just pressing to make sure that adhesive grabs hold there we go and you can see those splatters have stayed white just beautiful I'm then going to take somewhere under here somewhere 
the little bird from New Beginnings, which is on an acrylic block ready. Let me just, and then we're just going to ink our little bird. take our little bird and just stand him onto the sort of wreath type image and again I've got that oxide ink on there so I'm just going to give it a little bit of time plus you know you know that I've done things the wrong way round and I've splattered and then stamped my beard and really I should have stamped my beard and then splattered but this is what happens when you're stamping and creating off the cuff. There we go. Lovely. So let's just see if there's a few more splatters just to. There we go. Make sure that the bird is part of the background just so that you can see that. And then I should have my little gel pen. Let's just give that a little, a little waft, just to give, it's not to dry the splatters, it's to dry the beard a little bit, just so I can add a little bit of white here and there to my little beard, just so that you can you can see that. Oh, just love that. And then if we add that to our card blank, that's got a little bit of a wider border just to make that pop even more. So again, we'll add our adhesive. This is why I like using the wet glue because if I don't get it sort of quite right, I can actually move that a little bit. There we go. And we'll just grab our wording, a butylon. Poor little beard has got some splatters on as well. So let's place him back. There we go. And let's grab the abutilon word that is somewhere underneath here. There it is. And sort of peel your stamps back. Don't stretch them. There we go. And we'll grab a butylon, Malvi. You can tell I'm getting all my flowers mixed up here, not a butylon, Malvi. Poor, poor old soul I am. Right. Let's now stamp that onto a piece of card. Stamp it onto a straight edge. That just helps you a little bit visually when you go to cut that out. Let me just grab those scissors. And I'm wide awake now and refreshed rather than sitting in front of the tally where I was nodding off. There we go. And I'm not going to add a black edge to this because this white will just pop against the background. There we'll go. I can add a little bit of shading underneath if I wish. I absolutely love that. So we just need that to just dry or sort of grab hold a few seconds. 
And just while that dries, I'll just grab my little intense pencil. Which I think I already put out. Yes, I did. So I'm getting up for nothing. So I'm just waiting for that to grab hold rather than it move around. And just add a little bit of that intense, a little bit of water. And then we'll just touch that so that we don't activate the oxides underneath. And then if we lift our card up, I'm really pleased with that. I think that's lovely. Really love that. So I hope you enjoy trying that out as well. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye everybody.